This program is part of the Cosmic Potato Podcast Network. For more shows like this, visit our website at CosmicPotato.com. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. I am Iron Man. That's a big point. Pizza Dude's got 30 seconds. And welcome to World War G episode 211. I'm Troy. I'm AJ. And I'm Colton. All right. Uh, so you wanted to talk Mario. Talk a little Mario, seeing as how it's March 10th or MAR10 Mario Day. Um, more so, like, there's so many different games to choose from and on so many different consoles. And I just kind of wanted to talk, like, favorite games, perhaps, uh, any memories or whatnot. Um, I know for myself personally, um, Mario Kart has got to be like I I couldn't decide because I was like, well, maybe like Mario Sunshine or some of these other other ones that have like really fond memories attached to, but like Mario Kart, like my brothers and I, we would play the crap out of those yeah. games. Like it was it was ridiculous, and then like it would like sometimes it would end in like fights, like legit like mm-hmm. arguments, and just we're just like, what you can't shoot the blue shell, you know? Like or, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, <laughs> no, actually, after a while, you'd start to come up with your own little rules. Mm-hmm. It's like all right, you you can only shoot this shell once, or you can't shoot it on this track, or you know something yeah. like that. Well, oh, especially when you're playing like on the Rainbow Road. Rainbow Road, yeah, right. That's like such a dick move that you yep. just like hit them, like completely knock them off, and then they're gone for like it seemed, felt like a minute. Mm-hmm. Like everybody else is just going along the track; they're already a lap ahead of you, <laughs> and then you finally like you know that stupid little guy puts you back on the track. Um, but I typically usually played as Mario, and here's kind of my thinking: is it wasn't he wasn't as sluggish as like DK or Bowser. You know, but he wasn't like as small as Toad that was going to be just like hit around. Mm-hmm. So he'd have like he'd have a little weight to him. Yeah, you know. Plus, like his face seems pretty aerodynamic. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, Mario does have a little weight to him. Yeah. Um. No, I, I, I usually. I mean, like it was the same with uh, Mario Brothers Two. Yeah. I usually pick Mario because he was the best all around character. Right. Um. You know, even, I'm, even in Smash, yeah. I would play like as him sometimes, just because yeah. like you use your coin maker and the, like it was pretty easy to get back. But he also had some like decent attacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, my Mario game playing ends at the Nintendo sixty four. Yeah, really. Mm-hmm. Because after then, I got a PlayStation, PlayStation two, three, four. Yeah, and I haven't played, you know, the Wii or the Switch or anything like that. And so I can't really speak to the new Mario games. Mario Kart 7 and some of those other newer ones. See, me, it was um, Super Mario 64 on the 64. And then after that, it was Super Mario 64 DS on the DS. Mm -hmm. So it's the same game. It's just portable. Um, And then I I also played a lot of Mario Kart. Mario Party was a really fun one when I would... Spend the night at my grandma's. Me and my aunt would play that all the time. Sure. Did, like I remember, like one of my favorite parts is because you had like all the characters that they were neck and neck, you mm-hmm. know, and then like who got the most coins, and you're like, oh, come on, you're like holding <laughs> your breath, like literally, like it was like the Oscars kind of mm-hmm. a deal where you're just like, I-, I know I have this. I'm pretty sure I've got the, the most stars, and then, like you, yeah, win it all, and <clears throat> and then Green Book wins, and right? It messes you up. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Flashback there for a second. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, I, my, my brother was really good at playing the original Mario Brothers. He could, he could beat the game, like, he was, he was like an old OG speedrunner. Yeah. That, you know, you see online all the time. He could beat it in under five minutes. Oh, wow. Yeah. (laughs) Um, if there was YouTube back then, he probably could have gone viral. Had a record. Yeah. 
Uh, I don't know if he can still do that now, but he could back then. I remember it was a couple episodes ago, like it was a while ago that we talked about just like the new speed run record that like some kid hit. That mm-hmm. it's ridiculous, it's like two minutes. I don't know. It was yeah. If if you read, um, uh, because there are there's stuff out there about how they do that. Mm-hmm. There are like so many little in game like glitches and stuff like that oh, you absolutely. have to take advantage of in order to beat that record that and then they also like know exactly like point whatever it is to like pause here on this thing Mm -hmm. and then like to move forward in advance because if you wait until this time then like the screw it's like different which um uh turtles you're gonna face in the next or like little guys you're gonna face in the next like area it's yeah it's ridiculous just how precise they've gotten it Mm -hmm. yeah but if if i ever were to get any Nintendo things, I'd probably get them just for the Mario games. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, um, and maybe maybe the Zelda games. I do Those are kind of like their two staple. I mean, that's why they originally like for the um, Switch they released like you know Zelda mm-hmm. because they needed those staples to kind of get boost <coughs> sales. I I know like quite a few people that purchased uh, Switches just for Zelda. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I was one of them. Um, but So I'm going to plan on getting Super Mario Odyssey and pretty much all of the Mario games, mm-hmm. including Mario Tennis. So when I do get that and pl- play through them, I'll let you borrow the Switch and you can play all of the Zelda games and all, right. all that stuff. Because I have two Switches. I can, I can lend one out. Deal. <laughs> He's thrown that around quite a bit. I got two. <laughs> yeah. I got two switches. And I'll even get Animal Crossing. All right. And then you can decide if you want okay. one for yourself. Works for me. Sweet. Yeah. As soon as I have the money to do that, and I'm not working for basically next to nothing. And none of the Switch games require an internet connection, so that's also a bonus. That would be handy right now. <laughs> that would be really handy right now. Yeah, but I think besides Mario and Zelda, I think that isn't that pretty much all Nintendo has as far as like <laughs> flagship characters. Yeah, they've kind of like tried to branch out, but then they just like they go all like Suicide Squad and then just <laughs> use the villains, you know, in other games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cause I can't. Splatoon. Yeah, well, yeah, sure. There's that. I, I guess. Know. Like, I'm trying to think of anything else that no. Yeah, so Nintendo's got Punch Out King Close. Back in the day, it was a really popular game. When you when you think of like other okay, okay when you think of maybe Nintendo, Samus. okay, when you're thinking of Nintendo, you typically just think of Mario and Zelda, right? Mar- yeah. Uh, for the Xbox, what are you thinking? Halo. Hey, Halo. Yeah, same same here. That's why like that and maybe Call Gears of, of War, Call of Duty, Call of Duty, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, PlayStation. Um, I do think Uncharted. Mm-hmm. Like, Uncharted, yeah. Grand Last Theft Auto. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. More like adult games. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God like, of War. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because that's, you know, that's PlayStation. That's that's for smart people. That's for adult <laughs> mature people. Uh, the Xbox is more for social gaming. PlayStation right. is for... <laughs> Serious, like <laughs> well, ones that like people that want like more of a story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Fun video games. <laughs> well, Troy's like ones where you don't have to interact with anybody else. Exactly. You, know? you, you know? guys never had fun by like some sort of like little like five year old. You guys never had fun playing Call of Duty. Oh, I did. Yeah, I was never a big Call of Duty. I played uh, Modern Halo, Warfare. Modern Warfare Two. Mm. I would go all. Like a knife, like you know how they have like the teleport oh, yeah. knife. Yeah. I would piss so many people off because that's all I would do is just have unlimited sprint, sprint around, and just stab people. And, and okay, you just like stay kind of in the barracks area, you know, like where mm-hmm. it's like more crowded, and you can just kind of like run around the corner and just stab it. Zap, zap. Yeah, and it's so fun to just shink, shink, shink like five people in a row. Yeah, they get so mad. Uh, yeah, I mean, I did a few Halo parties back in my day. Black Black Ops. Mm-mm. Did you guys go that zombies? I don't know. Uh, no, the heck out of those. back when zombies came out, I was too young to really appreciate the horror genre, oh, no, no, and no, it like, terrified me. Oh, really? Oh, even in black, like, I couldn't even. I can't. I couldn't stand Nazi zombies. 
<laughs> That's like actually your biggest fear <laughs> to this day. He gets PTSD. You wake up in the middle of the night screaming. Like, well, like when I played X, zombies. when I played oh, Xbox, it was always at night because I always had like I had school and then I had sports and then homework and then it was free time yeah. for a couple hours. Yeah. So I'd play Call of Duty, but oh, so it was already like dark. It was already night. dark every time I started playing. I was like, I'm not playing no freaking zombies. I, I've tried like watching like I know this is a different tangent, but I've tried like watching scary movies in the daytime and it just doesn't work. I have to wait until like nighttime. It's kind of like that's kind of glued into my head. Now for me, I I wasn't a big fan of the Call of Duty stuff. <sighs> Because every time I thought about Call of Duty, I would think about um, these these high school jocks playing it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you that associated their, with it? Yeah, that's why I associated with it. It's like, I don't want to play that. Uh, <laughs> high school jocks are playing that one. Um. Talk about PTSD. <laughs> you guys had Game Boys, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Game Boy Colors. Did you ever play like the, the Zelda games on mm-hmm. Game Boy, like Link's oh, Awakening? Yeah. I believe so, yeah. They're coming out with the updated version of Link's Awakening on Switch, by the oh, way. Kind of like what they did with uh, Pokemon Go. Mm-hmm. Um, or not Pokemon. It's, it's Let's Play, yeah. Let's yeah. Play. Let's Play Pikachu and Let's Play Eevee. Oh, yeah, Pokemon. That's another big <coughs> Nintendo property. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably... Completely <laughs> forgot like a huge yeah. chunk yeah, of our I forgot about that. Pokemon's uh, probably actually bigger than Zelda. It's, Ooh, I don't know. I, then there's fighting words there. Yeah, I think it's it's pretty close. I didn't it's say it was neck more neck. fun. He said it's probably bigger because <clears throat> they have a TV show and a movie coming out and a movie. This, yeah, that's true. It's in more like different forms, and I think more games yeah. too. It's possible. Probably, that's yeah, possible. probably. I mean, last time we saw Link on the small screen or the big screen, I think it was like Captain N, the mm. game master. <laughs> Back in the eighties, <laughs> they, I like, I I'm fearful of them trying to do like a Zelda game, but at the same time, I'd kind of like to see a live action one. But as long as they did it kind of more like the um, Battle Angel style, where yeah. you can like do still use a lot of like CGI, so it's larger than life. They'd have to have a really big budget for that, though. If it's low budget CGI, it's not worth yeah. it. You might as well do live action at that point. Yeah, yeah. I could see a Link movie being like a cross between a Knight's Tale and Lord of the Rings. Okay, yeah, something in there in that area. Right. Just something that's epic and fantasy, but at the same time is still kind of rooted, a kind of grounded. That. Yeah. You know what the funny thing is about that? I say the Knight's Tale was grounded in reality, but <laughs> that branch of Nintendo. Like, Link is the main character in every single one of the games, Yeah. but his name is only in three of the games, Yeah. like yeah. in the title. Like, there's A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, and um, Link. there's another one. Yeah, I can't Link, remember. Far From Home. <laughs> Link Homecoming. <laughs> Something like that. But, Link um, to nice. Electric Boogaloo. In other news, uh, Will Smith is not going to be returning as uh, Deadshot in Suicide Squad 2. He said, like, in the article, it goes down to say that, like, scheduling issues because he's, like, filming Bad Boys for Life and a couple other movies. And Okay, but he's filming Bad Boys for Life, which, by the way, is a dumb movie title. Yeah. Right now. He's filming right now. Right. So usually filming takes, what, a month and a half? Something like that. A couple months. Yeah, at the most. Maybe three months. I really think months. that it's the streak. Uh, like, because he's up in his 50s, right? Yeah. So it's got to be like uh, taking a toll, you know, to try to get into suicide shape size. Got to get into suicide shape. Right? <laughs> yep. Well, I mean, that's kind of the part of the reason a little bit, like with Robert Downey Jr., you know, yeah. <clears throat> in Iron Man, because, like, you get nothing but broccoli and chicken. <laughs> yeah. Yep. See, but if if I was Will Smith, I would definitely try to make up as many excuses as I can to not do Suicide Squad 2. Just because of how horrible it's going to mm-hmm. be? Yes. <laughs> because yeah. the first one tanked, and he's like, man, that was a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Well, then why are they making a bright 2? <laughs> they are? Yeah. Oh. Wasn't he a bit more connected to that one than... Wasn't he like an executive producer I believe, or I something like so. that? Yeah. That's probably why. Because that, that means more money for him. Yeah. Where a Suicide Squad... Like, he can pay himself as the actor and as a producer. Exactly. Where a Suicide Squad, he's just the actor. Uh-huh. 
we're piecing this together, Will Smith. Yeah, you you can't lie to us, Will Smith. <laughs> we're on to you. But the man who is in talks to replace Will Smith actually just hosted Saturday Night Live last night, which was, eh, it was okay. Uh, Idris Elba is in talks to replace Will Smith as Deadshot. So this right squad. here is a guarantee that he's not going to be returning to Marvel. There's no way. That's true. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. So Heimdall's right. not coming back, guys. Not coming back. He's dead, dead. Oh, dang. Um, okay, so I wasn't, like, there's was a new movie that he, um, he's going to be in. That I'm trying to think. That we just saw, like, the when we went and seen Captain Marvel, he was in a trailer. Luke and Hobbs. Luke and Hobbs. Yes. Okay, that was the first time that I'd seen him, like, I mean, I know he's done some action movies, but at the same time, that was the first time when I'm like, all right, he could actually probably do a pretty good job with this. Mm-hmm. You know, he uh, he's got the same like a similar build, and he's kind of a badass. And I think personally, he's a better actor than Will Smith. Oh, absolutely. So, so I think he'll bring more of a uh, a gravitas to that role than Will Smith could. Ooh, so. well said. Thank you. Okay. So I'm I'm on board with Idris Elba. Oh, same here. I have no problem with that casting at all. Um, so speaking of Suicide Squad and Idris Elba coming on as Deadshot. A lot of Suicide Squad talk. (laughs) I know, right? So, um, the character list, the roster for the Suicide Squad, um, has now been released. So Margot Robbie's coming back as Mm -hmm. Harley Quinn. Um, and then a few other characters, Ratcatcher. Have you you guys heard of Ratcatcher? Ratcatcher. See, I've never heard of any of these, and that's why I'm relying on your guys' knowledge on them. Ratcatcher... There's a little Easter egg of him in Arkham Asylum, the video oh, game. Oh yeah, yeah, but I I can't I can't place him. He started out as an exterminator in Gotham City before turning to a life of crime, aided by an army of small rodents that he can, can communicate. Oh, that she can communicate with, um, and control. And they're also turning her into a woman. Yeah, um, which is which is fine because it's, it's yeah. a D level character. Yeah, so it's like Rat King from Ninja Turtles. That's what that's really what I was thinking of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, except for like. Uh, or what's the other character that they had for, like, the Pied Piper for DC? Or where you, like, had the orphans? It was in oh, the animated in, series. in Batman the Animated Series. Yeah, 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 yeah. If they went that direction with this character, that could be kind of cool. You know, like, she's just basically, she's like a, um, over Oliver and his yeah. gang kind of a deal. That'd be interesting. Um, and I know you guys are pretty excited about this one, King Shark. Yeah, King which Shark. you guys kind of predicted it because... You were like, hey, I hope they have King Shark on Suicide Squad this time. It, this That's was before right. the we roster. Did. We did say yeah. that. I think that was last week or the week before. It was within the last couple of weeks you guys yeah. said that. Um, totally called it. Well, as long as they go the direction of actually, I mean, if they did motion caption and made his head a little bit like bigger than like a regular human. Because if they just kind of smush it down and say, oh, yeah, he's he's got the teeth of a shark. Well, like, like you said, if they do like what they do with the lizard in mm-hmm. Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. Well, yeah. like you guys saw King Shark in The Flash. The Flash, yeah. They did a pretty good job with yeah. that. If they did a better CGI version of that, mm-hmm. I'd be fine with it. Body of a man, head of a shark. It's he's, awesome. He's like chilling just in a seat like with a cat in his like lap and <laughs> just like slowly does the turn like <laughs> – then he eats the cat. Yeah. yeah. Um, that would be, that'd be cool. And then they're also going to have Mr. Polka Dot or Polka Dot Man. <laughs> oh, jeez. Polka Dot Man. You guys See, know anything about I, this guy? I do know Polka Dot Man. He's an old, like, OG Batman villain. Like, oh, yeah. Back in can, the 30s and 40s, yeah. Like, that same. Yeah. Wow. So, apparently, he has Polka Dots that grow on his body, and he can take them off and turn them into them weapons. weapons. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, cool. Yeah, it's it's pretty awesome, you guys. Uh, it's like it's like a nickname that you get in high school because you have like zits and acne. stuff. Yeah, really bad acne. And they call polka him, dot man. Hey, polka dot man. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, I'll get you guys someday. He starts picking them and throwing them at you. <laughs> <laughs> Beware polka dot man. And well, then... Uh, how, well, how are they going to even make him cool? You know, a lot of these characters you can think of ways that they could translate it into a cool character you're like all right that has potential well they're they're probably not going to do blue green red and yellow polka dots or yeah i wouldn't think so or he'll be the one that dies really early on like uh what's polka his dot name man. Like, slipknot, slipknot like, yeah dies within the first like mm-hmm. 10 seconds 
Um, gets eaten by King Shark. I just want King Shark to eat somebody. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. And then the final one actually has a pretty sweet name. Uh, Peacemaker. Oh, Peacemaker. I'm not familiar with that character. Let me see. Uh... It's an anime character. It's <laughs> like, like flash the peace sign and kind of do that. <laughs> okay. It says, he's an agent of peace whose motives are driven by an extremist form of pacifism that makes him love peace so much he would kill for it. Hmm. <laughs> Okay. One of my favorite All right. Irony man. <laughs> so it should be called. In, in one of my favorite, actually, um, yeah, one of my favorite animes, Full Metal Alchemist, there's this character that he's kind of this religious zealot that he takes it to the extreme that he wants nobody to like have these abilities. So he just goes around and killing everybody. So this character was actually pretty menacing. So it's got potential. Hmm. I think it would be cool if they, if Peacemaker was like a, he dressed like a old west like cowboy or something. <whistles> Carried those the cult peacemakers. <laughs> Very good. Um, okay, so um, I was interested in this article <clears throat> because there's one person in here who's played the game. Yes. Um, so this is stating that uh, lessons from Spider Man. Or it's called Lessons from Spider-Man, How a Video Game Could Change Science Education. So apparently, in the new Spider-Man game, there's a whole bunch of missions and side things and things uh, that have to do with the game that are, involve a lot of heavy science theories. Yeah, uh, Harry Harry Osborn's not really like in it for the majority, like for the majority of the game. Mm-hmm. And but he goes around and he says like, "Hey, um, I need you to assist with this thing." And then it actually breaks it down into science because you go into this little like lab tech room that's on the top of a building that it says like to make uh, make sure that this. Um, industry and his company stays relevant mm-hmm. i'm gonna uh, help assist with this thing so there's a couple of them where it's like you have to go around and catch these infected birds and then you also have to release this certain spray over the top of the whole like um the bay area where all the fish are contaminated mm-hmm. and there's like lots of different like you even like there's one where you have to swing through these little like things of smog to collect samples so that you can see what the rates are of a certain, like, um, you know, mm-hmm. pH or whatever. I don't know. Well, I, it's all scientific mumbo jumbo, but like you have to swing through it or you also follow these certain pipes that are releasing, um, excess amounts of chemicals into the air and kind of spider web them and put it, prevent it. But you get like a ton of, um, XP and that's where, like, if you do a lot of these different, like, side missions, that's how you can, like, level up your character so you can, you know, be a little bit higher than your competition. Gotcha. So do you feel like this game has made you a better scientist? Mm, no, it's got me more intrigued, and it doesn't like seem like it's too far out of the realm of possibilities. Gotcha. You know? um, it, you're just like going around playing, and um, it does have like a very Greenpeace-esque mm-hmm. vibe to it, but at the same time, it, it, actually, it actually works, and I don't know. All the signs I need to know I learned from Dr. Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pills solve all your problems. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 It's a um, philosophy I've carried throughout my life. So, what do you guys uh, think about the possibility? Like Tic Tacs. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you guys think about the possibility of having more educational based games that are actually fun? Like, That's, I'm, I'm, I'm. Do you think it's that. possible to actually learn something from a video game? Yes. Um. Uh, I, okay, well, I mean, this isn't the best example because I didn't learn anything, but my <laughs> my coordination was improved by video games. Mm-hmm. Um, playing the drums on Rock Band for so long. Oh man, I miss Rock Band. My coordination yeah. literally improved by playing that game. I I, th- I think um, that this has the potential as long as it's like mm, not like the main focus of the story. Because mm-hmm. th- then it kind of... If it's not required, like, yeah, if it's not required to finish the game. Yeah. Then it becomes like a game where you would play, like, school in the computer lab. Right? Yeah. And Mario teaches typing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, that's how I learned to type, actually. Through, <laughs> thanks, Mario. But, yeah, no, I, I'm... I think if they want to move more into that direction, as long as you were saying it, fit in, it fits into the plot, right. fits into the story... 
Um, I, I could see him doing that with future Batman games, future Spider-Man games, because they're both pretty much, scientists. Yeah, pretty much anything that actually, like, the the superhero is a genius. Yeah. Like, Batman, Iron Man, the Hulk. Mm-hmm. Not Superman. Yeah, <laughs> Superman's an idiot. <laughs> no, he actually is super intelligent. <laughs> yes, he is. We were talking about that the other day. <laughs> yeah, that's why I had to throw it in there. <laughs> That they his, just, his brain is super intelligent. They just never use that in the comic. Yeah, or in the TV show, or in the or movies. The TV, right, yeah. Well, okay, so um, a lot of the technology that they've actually uh, used, like even for Grand, uh, let's see, Grand Theft Auto Five, they use the driving mechanics to teach like uh, soldiers. You know, there's a lot of, like, technology that they use, um, and even in, like, a lot, of, especially in these, like, uh, war games, there's a lot of technology and stuff that people are using nowadays um, that's actually pretty relevant, so I think they could also go that direction as well. Well, you guys remember a few years ago um, how they were taking, like, the top 100 players of Call of Duty and taking them out to a sniper range and seeing how well they did, and they actually did as well as the Marines that right. were trained to fire a sniper rifle. Seriously. Like, that's pretty I cool. I don't doubt that at all. Nice. Yeah. Uh, could they... Okay, but could they do a game that's <laughs> where's, strictly Where's the button just... I push to hold my breath? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now what button fires this? <laughs> I, I could see them being just as accurate as them until you start taking, like, wind into the factor. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because if they're just doing, like, just out on an open range and it's only, like, maybe 100, 200 yards, then that'd be pretty accurate. But then you start getting these, like, long distant ones where you have to just lob the bullet, basically. Mm -hmm. How long do you think it would take to train those people who are already good at regular shooting to account for the wind? I think it would be a lot quicker than. A lot quicker, yeah. Training somebody from nothing. I mean, for me, who knows pretty much nothing about guns? I understand the the mechanics and physics of like firing a uh, sniper rifle from great distances. Mm-hmm. That it's going to like, like drop if the, down if the well. wind is coming from the left, you, you know, aim a little bit more to you have the to left. aim over this way. So it, the it's bullet the same will concept go that as way. far as like when you're playing, you probably learned that from like the golfing games, right? I learned from Mythbusters. Really? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Science. 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 Also, so talking about Superman made me think of this. Did you guys see the new trailer for Brightburn? Yes. Oh my gosh, I'm yeah. so excited it's for this movie. Awesome. Uh, it's it, so far, it's kind of like flying under the radar, but I think mm-hmm. this will like really do well. Yeah. So f- for those of you listening, if you don't know what Brightburn is, it's basically it's a ripoff of Superman, mm-hmm. but it's what would have happened if Superman was inherently evil. If he was evil. Yeah. When he came down, mm-hmm. and it looks so good. Yeah, it I'm, looks it looks scary. So scary. Oh. I'm I'm stoked for it. But I, I just um, had to throw the, that in there. In the, another side note, us is also doing like extremely well as far as with the critics. Mm. I'm pretty stoked for that one. I heard I saw just a quick thing about it that was like it's like no movie you've ever seen before. So I'm I think that like he's kind of you know done a, got another like get out on his hands mm-hmm. jordan peele man he just came out of nowhere right which is so crazy because he was a comedy writer yeah, he's a comedy that. guy and he does great in both yeah i still need to see get out though oh gosh yeah it's a great one get out you haven't <laughs> seen it <laughs> no i think i think you and emily would enjoy that one mm-hmm. we'll have to watch it's a, it. it's a thinker um Oh, yeah. I was going to switch that one up. So, Microsoft is reportedly launching a diskless Xbox One S next month. And, okay, my main question for this is, would you guys be on all like on board with just a completely, like, a system that doesn't require any disks? Well, is it is it diskless or is it cartridgeless as well? Like... Like the Switch, where you have little tiny cartridges that you push in there, like an SD card. No, it's a diskless. Like it's just completely. You go to like the the Xbox Live. It's all digital, so Correct. you need internet to download games. Yeah. And I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. Right. Me either. I mean, I, it's convenient, sure, but it's gonna piss a lot of parents off. Yeah, it is. Especially for the games that are like sixty gigs. Yeah. You download them. It has to have a huge amount of storage. Right. There's no way they a can get away terabytes, with that. Like. Mm-hmm. But then, like, you can also have an ex- probably like an external one as well. Yeah. But even still, like, here's then, this extra thing you can buy to 
Mm-hmm. Get more games. Yeah. And the, the, the thing th- that I have an issue with is they're not having discs, but mm-hmm. the games are still going to be 60 bucks brand new. Right. That's stupid. I, I'm even mad at Nintendo for that. I think all games should have a discount for digital downloads. Because yeah. one, you're not using up their materials or anything. It's literally almost free to them. Basically, like their cost is zero aside from paying out the people who made the game. Um, and two, the game has absolutely zero resale value right. at that point when you download it, yeah. which is why I'm trying to buy more games, like the physical copies. Like I brought, I bought Super Smash Brothers Ultimate because I've never played Super Smash before. I didn't know if I would really like it. Yeah. And I still might sell it, like, but I have the option to do that. Right, 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 right. And, then, and, like, a lot of it, this is coming from, like, them completely wanting to cut out, like, GameStop. Mm-hmm. Just because, you know, like, okay, so you purchase the game for $60, and then you sell it back to them for, like, you know, 15 or $2. <laughs> yeah, but who and, does that, really? Okay, but then they turn around and sell it for, like, $30, right? So that's complete profit for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that nothing goes back to the game creators. So they're kind of, like, irked at that. But the, one of the other reasons why I'm not, like, sold on this idea is just because I do like having, like, a physical copy of, like, these games that you can, like, play whenever you'd like. Yeah, and I, I know that you like to display your mm-hmm. your games. Like, it's, yeah. it's a s- source of pride to have all of these games. For, like trophies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. And then people come over and they're like, wow, you spent a lot of money on games. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, movies. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I think you're probably one of the only people that I know that actually still buys physical discs okay. for movies. So the only problem with like the movies is because um, for this very reason, Voodoo in a couple of months they're going away. Like, which is I was thinking I was like leaning more towards that direction. I'm like, all right, um, Voodoo is going to be around for a while. I'm just going to go ahead and just purchase just the digital copy of these movies. Mm. Now they're going away. Yeah. Can you and, not download them or keep um, them? Uh, they said that like you can potentially get them as long as you have like your account linked with like something else, mm-hmm. and you'd purchase like any of the exclusive Voodoo movies that you've purchased will be gone. But as far as like if you purchase like it from Walmart and you have it like going through the Walmart app, mm-hmm. then you can still potentially get access to these movies. But it it yeah kind of bugs. Well, and I think this is the obvious progression that video games are going. Oh, for sure. Being discless and that sort of thing. Um, because, you know, we kind of moved away from the cartridge and then went to CDs. And so, that I mean, it, it makes sense. Progression-wise, mm-hmm. yeah. But at the same time, I think they need to retool it a, a, a little bit. Like I said, make it cheaper. Make it, make it so, I don't know, maybe you can have like a, you can have your own little... Uh, uh, like game online store that you can you know resell your games. Yeah, or, or at like least that. just like for every game you have a license that comes with it, and yeah. you can transfer that license to another person. <clears throat> yeah, there you go. And then you can work out the monetary stuff after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel I feel like if they had an interface where you sold it through that marketplace, then whoever made the game is going to get a cut of that, which isn't cool anyways. What would be kind of a reasonable price? Like, is, is if they all of a sudden, you know, which they're not going to do because they're already at 60 bucks is kind of like the standard. I'd say 40 for the standard digital. For a digital? Yeah. See, I Take was thinking 30% off. Like, I was thinking like 30, 35, somewhere in there. That's what I was thinking if, too. If the, I was thinking well, like if that's the only version... Right. So, like, if they have a hard disk version uh, and a digital, then twenty bucks. Yeah, yeah. You, you but if you it. have the option, then yeah, twenty bucks. Yeah, forty bucks. I could see that. But then, if it's the only way that you can buy that game, then thirty. Mm. And they just like almost need to reset the whole. I mean, they won't do this, but they should. Um, because like you said, like the majority of it, it costs them like next to nothing after they've already like paid off everybody. Yeah, that's helped make. The yeah, game. they would save so much money. Um. And then places like GameStop could still be around because they could just be resellers of the game, sell like little cards that you could use to gift to somebody. Like this is a card that equals this game. You can go download it mm-hmm. if you enter this code. And they would have to go mm-hmm. more the direction of like a toy story or mm-hmm. a toy store. Yeah. Um, where they have like other exclusive merchandise or mm-hmm. perhaps just exclusive games. I know they've done that in the past, like the Song of the Deep and some of these other ones that GameStop backed. 
So then they had the exclusive rights to sell it. Yeah. Or just go, you know, com- completely vintage, just have old old video games. and Yeah. People are going to still be buying them. Yeah. All oh, the prices are going to go up, though. <laughs> That's true. They will. And it's going to be like everybody with the Amiibos. Yeah. I, oh, I went to uh, the Great Entertain Mart yeah. to oh, yeah. try to find Amiibos. They didn't have any. Really? Yeah. What? Because I know, I know the DI does, but they have like a whole shelf of them, but they're only like two characters. Huh. There's there's the raccoon from Tom Nook from Animal Crossing, and then I think another Animal Crossing character. Which but nobody wants them. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants them. <laughs> I don't blame for not wanting Tom Nook, because screw that guy. <laughs> yeah. He overcharged me all the time. Like, I've given him so many bells. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, man. He's... Tom Nook can go straight. Anyways, well, if He's a crook. if you guys do want amiibos, Tom Nook is a crook. We got a chant and everything. <laughs> there is an amiibo underground. It's called eBay, and you can buy. Like I, I seriously bought all of the Zelda amiibos for ten bucks. Yeah, nice. to go on the, they, the dark. They web. give you the cards, like because it's just an RFID chip that they can program. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they just put that in a card, give it a fancy case, and then they sell it. Ooh, so just take shipping takes a month. Yeah, but yeah. For me, I, I want the I want the figure. I know. Yeah, that was the big selling point for me with Disney Infinity. I wanted those figures, mm-hmm. so you can like display those. I can like display them like trophies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're on the same page here. So, yeah. Full yeah. circle. Yep. Booyah. Um, <clears throat> speaking of full things coming full circle, <laughs> uh, Arrow is mercifully ending after season eight. I hope it's quick death. Which will only well, it'll only be ten episodes. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I haven't watched much of Arrow lately. Um, I think I stopped at like season six or five. Yeah, I'll I'll catch up. Um, but I'm in no hurry. <laughs> yeah. Like now, I'm just like, oh, I gotta make sure to watch the Flash. Hey, hey, I remember this was a couple of seasons ago, Troy. You were just like, this is a chore. Like it I is. have to. Yeah. Like. It was almost as cringeworthy as like watching like Supergirl. Yeah, <laughs> almost. Or um, Iron Fist or Iron Fist. Yeah, yeah. It um, it, it's been it's been it's been a rough go. It's gotten a little better lately. Is that because they've done the crossovers? I mean, the crossovers help, but they're going in different directions with this. Latest season, which is kind of like flashbacks to the island. No, they've gotten rid of that. <laughs> now they've gone into the future, uh, okay. which is interesting because um, it's kind of a, a, a future mystery, and it's yeah. So they've made it somewhat interest interesting, but at at this time, it's just like, do I even care anymore yeah. <laughs> about this show? Um, it's gone the direction of supernatural. Yeah, a little bit. It's it's overdone. It's welcome. Yeah, I feel like when they do Overstated. seasons of superhero shows, they need to come up with like four really good seasons. Yeah, and then end it at that. Kind of do a Stranger Things. Yeah, because then they're just beating a dead horse after that. Because mm-hmm. then yeah, you can like then you can have like really cool villains for each season, and you don't have to like start getting like you know pulling ones out of the woodwork that you ha- like nobody cares for. Yeah. Well, th- the thing that I hated about the Arrow and the Flash shows is because like if you watch one, you kind of have to watch the other for certain episodes to make sense. Right. And it's like I wish they would just do hey four seasons of this awesome show, then we're going to create a new awesome show where this character might come back. Every now and then, but it's going to be a completely different cast and characters. Mm-hmm. And cool story, and then they would have so much bigger of a budget. Yeah, they if they would. took the budget they of would. eight seasons and put it into four, oh man, that would be awesome, right? Yeah, no, I I completely agree. You know, as as much as I enjoy the superhero shows, I used to watch pretty much all of them. I'm now down to just the Flash. That's the only one I watch consistently. Mm-hmm. Um. And even that one is starting to grate on me a little bit. The what about um what's a legend a Lee legend? I haven't or? watched Legends in so Legends long. Tomorrow, I yeah. I lost interest with that one real quick. I wonder why. Is it because it was so cheesy? That's possible. Because <laughs> yeah. the acting was bad, and then the girl with the permanent frown face. Mm-hmm. Oh, I hate her so bad. <laughs> and the stories were dumb, and yeah. 
there, there's a slew of reasons why. Like, there's a lot like of once reasons. You, once you start breaking down. Yeah. Honestly, as soon as you start putting time travel in your show, it's time to go. Yeah. And that's what that show was. That's all it was, was time travel. So it's... <sighs> all right, we get it. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of superheroes, Emma Watson is reportedly the front runner to be in the new Marvel Black Widow movie. Now she's not the front runner to be Black Widow. No, no, no. People are people are confused it. by that. Scarlett Johansson is yes. still Black Widow. Oh, Scar Joe. Be cool to see Emma Widow. Watson in a villain role, though. Yeah, I just want to see Emma Watson and Scarlett Johansson in the same film, right? <laughs> in the same I think, shot. I think oh. my head might explode. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be a mud Which wrestling one, a scene. Mo- I was gonna say among other things. <laughs> <laughs> Troy watches like the ten o'clock showing of it by himself. <laughs> Sunglasses and a hat. <laughs> really loose hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I- I'm apparently I've become the pervert who masturbates <laughs> in the back of the theater. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's okay, Troy. We've all been there. <laughs> Have we? <laughs> Have we? Huh. <laughs> all right. Um, I do think this is a little bit too little, too late. Scarlett <laughs> Johan, unless Scarlett Johansson does something really cool in Endgame and kind of makes you want to watch her in a full length movie, this is she's. Is it going to be a prequel? I don't. I don't think so. No, I think it'll take place after, but I don't know if it's so much too little, too late. I just don't think her character has ever been that interesting. She doesn't have powers, and that's not cool. She needs to have like the um, uh, what's his name, Hawkeye, Hawkeye alongside. See, as I, Ronan. See, yeah, and I think those two together in like a cool kind of spy film mm-hmm. could be entertaining, yeah. and it could be fun, but. I don't know. I I just I'm just not that interested in seeing a Black Widow film. She's literally one of the only characters in the MCU that doesn't have powers. Like yeah. Hawkeye has powers. He has he, does. he has hyper kinesis or something. Like he can control where he like he doesn't miss. It's true. He doesn't. He, He's like a bullseye. Yeah. His, his yeah. His, his targeting is like superhuman. But she's always just worked better. I mean, even the comics, she's worked better as a supporting character, mm-hmm. not a not a lead. Mm-hmm. That's why her her solo comic got canceled because it just doesn't work. And I think that it's this has also been like fully like flushed out because you've got like um, quite a few other. What's the? I mean, you try you tried it with what's the red one? Uh, red Sparrow. Yeah, and it really didn't work. The one, the only one, one of the few that really did work was the oh, what the heck is it called now? It's basically a John Wick with a girl. Uh, what's the what's the name of that one? It was really well done. Atomic Blonde. Atomic Blonde. Thank you. Yeah, that I mean that one seemed to work, and that's kind of like the direction that they'd have to go with mm-hmm. it. Kind of a spy esque like. You'd have to you'd have to make it a. Uh, a spy movie and an espionage film, you know, something like that. Because you can't have a big super powered villain and then throw Black Widow at him. Yeah. That's not gonna, it's not gonna work. No. You know, so it, it would have to be something grounded. It's kind of like having, grounded. A, it's kind of like having a regular person versus a regular Black Widow. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's easy. Smash. Just yeah. Smash it and Switch. it's dead. Would you have any other Marvel characters in this movie to kind of draw in fans? Nick Fury? Yeah, you could have Nick Fury. You could have Hawkeye. Um, could you go Maybe some bigger? B-level superheroes. I'm trying to... No, because you're not sure if any of them are going to die, right? <laughs> and they're kind of over the whole superhero movies. They wanted to move on to other things. You know, you couldn't have a Captain America... Because you really you couldn't even do like a like a shield thing because shields done in that universe it doesn't exist anymore yeah so man I don't know you might be able to throw in like Bucky like the Winter Soldier okay um she helps out people in Wakanda <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know I don't know I mean that that one's tough that one's tough. Mm. Who knows? Um, all right. 
So, speaking of women superheroes, yes, um, wasn't no, it wasn't last night. It was Friday night. Yes, uh, AJ and I went and watched uh, Captain Marvel. We caught the late show. Well, because it was kind of funny, we were going to go to the uh, nine thirty show, and then like that's not late. The only. <laughs> <laughs> Not for us swinging bachelors. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Um, wild and crazy guys. <laughs> I've been asleep for a half hour at that point. <laughs> Although I do have a kind of a funny story before we even get into this. Which is why I didn't call you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was, yeah, the 930 showing the, only the front row was available, which nobody wants to do that, you know, like. Yeah. I did that for Twilight and it was the worst. Uh, Not because I was in the front row, though. Because it was, it was Twilight. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. it was Twilight. <laughs> that's just, but, um, dumb, <laughs> that's just doubly <laughs> bad. Um, but no, I went to, yes, yeah, so we had to wait around until the 1030 show. 1030 I show, yeah. Um, so I went to use like the restroom and I looked over and it had like the little guy icon, you know, like the guy character. And I went to walk in there and then I looked and this general, I'm, oh, I'm still not a hundred percent sure. Well, was, was, like, was he standing in a urinal? No, like or was standing he, at the sink, oh, at washing the sink. their hands. But like, it threw me off because it was this guy that had like longer hair and he was a little androgynous. Yes. Where, sure. I wasn't sure which direction. So I stopped and had to look over and it said, I'm like, Oh, it says men. Like, <laughs> and then I saw the urinals and I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it, it completely threw me off. But it, it made it so I kept like laughing at the urinal, which I got some weird looks. But <laughs> I don't really care. No, you did come out of the bathroom laughing, which I thought was kind of weird. Kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> Not many people usually do that. It's like, what'd you see, AJ? Right. But like, I, like I told you, it's 2019. People are peeing everywhere. Right. In every bathroom. Yeah. Doesn't matter. So yeah. Uh, so we went and watched Captain Marvel. Um, so. Before we get into it, let's talk about the plot. Okay. Um, the plot is that there was a an Air Force... Well, is the plot going to give away too yeah. much of the story, you think? That's why I was like, I was tentative. I would just say what you guys just... felt about the movie. I wouldn't go into any detail, especially because I'm going to be seeing it in an hour. <laughs> That's a good point. All right. <laughs> let's for talk Col- about what we thought Col- about it. Sake. <laughs> um... Overall, though, I th- I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought she did a great job, and she fit the part. She's she Captain did. America, or Captain Marvel, excuse me. She Freudian did. Freudian slip right there. Right. <laughs> um, to me, uh, yeah, she did She did do a good job, and I thought the movie was fun, and it was entertaining. And it was, like, cool to see, like, Nick Fury actually take a more comedic role. He did. Right, he was he was not the Nick Fury that we know in Avengers and no the serious beyond. like like by the books kind yeah. of a dude. Yeah, this was just just Shield Agent Nick Fury, mm-hmm. um, loose and ready for fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you like I said, it was a fun, entertaining show, but at the same time, like I'm I'm in no hurry to go back and see it again. Yeah, you know. It's like it added to the like the whole MCU, and it helps like put it into a direction, you know, for Endgame. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a good lead into Endgame. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. As far as introducing that character, okay. yeah, yes, yeah. for sure. Um, I feel like this was a necessary step, though, because she is obviously going to be an Endgame. She is. It did yeah. also, like, and Troy pointed this out, that it did feel like this is the beginning of the next generation. The next phase of Marvel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It did. And I, before you got here, I was talking to Colton, and it, it felt like the first Iron Man film. Like, okay. yeah. they weren't... They hadn't really established the universe yet. They were just getting going. You were introduced to new new characters, new people. Um, There wasn't much crossover with the other films. No. Uh, You introduced to new alien races. And so it it felt like a a new beginning, a new start. Especially where it was taking place in the 80s. 90s. And 90s, excuse me. Yeah, the 90s. Took place in 95. Um it did kind of feel a little like they did a good job with making it feel dated, but at the same time, it's got awesome effects. It does. It, it has has great visuals. Uh, the action's really cool. Um, yeah, I think probably the next time I'd watch it is like, you know, Redbox it or when I purchased yeah. the movie. Yeah, exactly. But I wouldn't... 
Uh, but I'm not saying I'm not putting the movie down. It's not a it's not a negative. I'm just saying that. Well, what am I saying? Um, because I'm not saying it's a bad movie. It's not something that you're used to. Well, no, it's not for, that from Marvel. It is. It, it, I don't even know it's that. It, it's not. It's not a bad movie. It's rewatchability. Not, yeah, the rewatchability may not be there. I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> Like now that I've seen it, I'm mm-hmm. s- I've seen it. Great. I yeah. I don't really need to see it again. Like so, before, so which ones? Okay, so kind of to put it in comparison, which ones out of the MCU did you want to see again? Avengers, like the first Avengers, okay, Winter Soldier, Civil War, Infinity War. Yeah, because I wanted to go back and see things that I missed. I wanted to go back and check out what Easter about, eggs. What about some of the smaller ones, as far as like Ant Man or Doctor Strange or Pretty much Black Panther? Spider-Man. Almost every Marvel movie I saw more than once in the theaters. Okay, like this is the first one where I'm like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I don't need to see it again. <laughs> no, that that's like, not it true. Did, it it didn't seem like there was as many like Easter eggs in there until yeah. like I mean the very end. Uh, which is worth like uh, there is two I think Thor, things. Thor two I only saw once. The Dark World I only saw once. Yeah. But you wish you could take back. Uh, Ragnarok. Ragnarok I saw a few times. <laughs> okay. But <clears throat> but you're right, it I don't feel like I missed anything. Mm-hmm. Um even when I went out to refill my drink, like I don't think I really missed anything. No. Yeah. Um, and I think like, I there's certain movies where I'd like I'd have to be like, "Hey, dude, like the, this just yeah. happened or something," you know, for a plot point. But no, like I'm like I I understood the story, got the plot, everything, everything was good. So Jude Law, did he seem like? I thought he did a much better job than whatever that dude's actor's name was in Wonder Woman. Chris as far, Pine, Chris Pine, as far as a villain goes, Jude Law did like an excellent job, and it reminded me a little bit of that newer King Arthur movie that came out where he was the villain. Mm. Um, so I, I thought he did a fantastic job, but he didn't seem like as big of a threat. You just gave away a spoiler, by the way. Oh, I wasn't listening. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good. I'm glad you weren't paying attention. Well, okay. I was just getting mad at something, but yeah. I'll, I'll tell something. you guys in a second. All right. No. <laughs> um, no. It. It. I mean, all every actor in there did really, really well. I. I wish they had a bit more Coulson, Agent Coulson. Okay. You saw him a little bit, but not really. All that yeah, much. he wasn't in there very much. Um, out of. Out of five cats, cats, yeah. <laughs> uh, I really like the cat, by the way. But that's yeah. obviously I'm gonna like the cat in the movie. Who's mm-hmm. <laughs> um, the real star of the film? Kind of. But yeah, out of five cats, I'm giving it like I'm I'm right in the middle. I'm like two, two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah, yeah. That's that's right where I'm at as well. I mean, it's it's just right in the middle of the road. It's not the worst Marvel film by any stretch, mm-hmm. but it's not the best. It's yeah. just like right in the middle. And I think it's a good stepping stone to this next phase of the MCU. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's it's a good... And she yeah, good direction. is really going to kick the trash out of Thanos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thanos has problems. Right. <laughs> now that Captain Marvel is here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but that, I, and again, it doesn't mean I'm not looking forward to the sequel. I am. And I'll go see it. Right. But, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't know why I, I... It didn't check all your boxes. Maybe that's it. Like. I think that's exactly it. It didn't check all the boxes. Yeah. Anyways, you guys want to hear what made me mad? Yeah. Okay. So as you were, you guys were talking about this movie. I got the FML notification that the estimates are in, and I looked at it. The perfect Cineplex has four Tyler Perry's A Medea Family Funeral. <laughs> guys, how do these movies make money? I, they are I, so stupid. I don't know. I've seen one of them, and that's all I needed to see I, to yeah, know that I they're stupid. Know. How do they make money? I don't understand. Anyways, that was just that's why I wasn't listening. Cause well, it's only going to add to. Tyler Perry's wealth, what, six hundred million? Yeah. He's, he's closing in on a billion. 
Yeah. Speaking of which, somebody forgot to fill out theirs. Oh, I know. Yeah. And, oh, four people forgot to fill out their, well, three. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But I am glad I got Captain Marvel in there because, yeah. It's going to make a ton of money. Yeah. It, it rocketed me into second position overall and the weak rank. You're, you're close on my heels for first. Am I? I think you're only. A Two couple million, million away. Good. We look at overall. Dun, here. Dun, dun. Yeah, Just I'm at 178 million. You're at 176 million. Ooh, okay. All right. Um, but that's only because the the season started over. Yeah. And last week was the first one. I kicked everybody's trash last season <laughs> until the last couple of weeks, and then I didn't do so well. But anyways. Yeah, and we we don't talk about FML much. It, it, it fantasy movie league. You can go download it. It's an app. It's like fantasy football, but for movies. Message us. We'll send you our code mm-hmm. and join. It's and join. It's a ton of fun. Like yeah. it, it really is. Um, and it doesn't require much. No, you know, just take a day, pick your movies, and then see how you do. Take five minutes and pick a mov- yeah. your movies, and then just watch your progress throughout the weekend. It's really fun. If we get more people, I think it'd be. I mean, we can pro like if we get like at least ten people doing it, I'm sure we could throw in some prizes for sure. overall winners and oh, runner ups sure. and things like that. Yeah. I think that'd be fun. Yep, absolutely. Um okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I forgot to pull out my thing again. Oh no. Hang on. Show us Troy. <laughs> <laughs> Show us that thing. <laughs> now, I I actually have the paper with all this written down. It's in the tote in the closet. I need to get this out. All right. Here's where you can listen to all of our episodes. You can listen to us at worldwarg.podbean.com. You can also find us on iTunes, Google Play, or at cosmicpotato.com, or really anywhere you can get your podcasts. We're probably there somewhere. On the social media, you can follow us at facebook.com slash worldwargpodcast. Um, we're also on Twitter and Instagram at wwgpodcast. <clears throat> You can also find all of our merchandise at shop.spreadshirt.com slash World War G. Uh, you can also email us anytime. Day or night. At worldwgpodcast at gmail.com. You can also call or text the show anytime at 385-240-1692. So this has been World War G episode 211. That has been AJ. That has been Troy. You've been a listener. Stay geeky, my friends.